Good afternoon and welcome to this week's episode of the Serious Security Seminar. Uh, today we have a guest speaker who's had uh, a wonderful, I think, uh, a number of meetings with some of our faculty on, on campus and excited about the collaborations that could come out of that. Uh, for those who are watching on video, uh, please take a look at the Serious website as the 20th annual Serious Security Symposium will be coming up uh, April 9th and 10th. Uh, of, uh, of this year. Uh, and if you happen to be viewing this in the future, take a look at our website because annually we hold this event uh, uh, that is open to the public. So our speaker today is Professor Meng Yu uh, from Roosevelt University. Welcome, Professor. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for coming everyone. And uh, it's my great honor to uh, report my recent uh, research work to uh, professors, students here. So uh, hopefully I can get some feedback from you and uh, further improve our uh, research work. Uh, so I, in recent years, I mainly, or our research group mainly worked on uh, ARM processors uh, and also security problems on ARM-based devices. So the major uh, reason is the popular uh, IoT devices and edge computing, uh, Internet of Things, uh, cloud computing. Uh, so the recent computing trend, those major trends will bring in more and more ARM-based uh, devices. So the security problems are becoming a very important uh, issue on those devices. So we have worked on several security problems. One of them uh, we think is very challenging uh, is how to protect uh, the applications when the operating system is compromised. Uh, so basically, you can think about the challenging problem. I uh, think I th I'm thinking my career. So I think more than 10 years ago, when I first heard of, of challenging security problems, one of the problem is how to run our programs in a malicious environment or in a hostile environment. How can you guarantee your program, your app, uh, is okay in that hostile environment. So this question or this problem has not been changed. Uh, in the past the decades, we proposed a lot of solutions, but it's still a challenging problem. So today, we just pick this problem, particular problem. Uh, we talk about one possible solution uh, on ARM processors. Okay, so that's the uh, whole background. Uh, <clears throat> so for so why we pick ARM processors? So basically, it's mainly about the, the recent trend, especially if you go to Home Depot, Walmart, uh, or Lowe's. Uh, so Best Buy, those popular stores, you will see smart home uh, demo area. So you go to that area, you see a lot of smart things, uh, like the Arlo or smart uh, doorbell, smart switches. So those are all Internet of Things. So I think every one of us have already learned a lot of it, and they are becoming more and more popular in our daily life. Like it or not, when I look at my home routers, I see 30 <laughs> or more <laughs> devices connected, including uh, the Chromebook uh, issued by my kids, uh, like elementary school and middle school. So we have, everyone has more and more devices. Those devices are mainly based on ARM processors. Okay, uh, so this is the major trend. So if we look at this picture, uh, so this picture is from the internet. So I, I didn't make it. So I borrowed this picture. And this picture shows uh, the family of internet of things or smart devices. Then you see how many categories, how many different uh, internet of things or smart devices we are having uh, now. And we are having more and more of them in our daily life. Okay, so th this, Picture, see, you see a lot of movies recently, right? So sci-fi movies. So the robots are becoming smarter and smarter. We are fighting with them. So a lot of people are really worrying about what our future will be if they are getting smarter and smarter, especially security plus the recent advance or development of AI technology, right? So someday probably the robot may beat us so if we don't act quickly. So that, that's the uh, one view of uh, Internet of Things or smart devices. But this picture is more realistic. This is not in 
like a movie. So this is a real thing. Uh, so many, many years ago, not many, so, so like five or six years ago, uh, the vehicle, the first vehicle was hacked, uh, is Jeep. Uh, so the Jeep was hacked. Uh, it's by a researcher, fortunately not by the real hacker. Uh, the researcher hacked the Jeep and uh, steering the Jeep into like off the road. And also the researcher demonstrated how to shut off the engine when the Jeep is running on the highway. So it's very dangerous. So those are real threats to our real life. And recently, uh, and, uh, Tesla, this is a very popular name, right? A lot of young people, uh, they are considering Tesla as their first car <laughs> ever. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a big trend. So Tesla was also hacked, okay? So because the whole vehicle had a lot of smart devices and uh, uh, the more computer or the more processors you bring into the system, the more vulnerabilities, more, more threats we have to face. So that's very realistic problems. So if we look at the platform, so what are supporting those IoT devices or smart vehicles uh, or smart things, then most of them, I'm not saying everything, but most of them are using ARM plus Linux platform. Or even if they are not Linux, in some kind of Linux or customized Linux. So that's the major platform supporting the Internet of Things or supporting the smart devices or smart vehicles. That's why we pay great attention to the security problems of, of these devices. So this platform, if you look at the list here, these platforms are supporting so many devices like digital video recorders, IP cameras, like RO system, a lot of monitoring system, uh, Chromebooks. Uh, so my kids bring uh, home Chromebooks issued by their schools. Uh, I didn't buy them, but they are bringing uh, Chromebooks home. And also smartphone, uh, Android systems, uh, even uh, iPhone. So iPhone is not using Linux, but iPhone is using like similar technology, uh, sharing the similar vulnerabilities I'm talking about here. So those are the uh, platform being used, uh, being used by many IoT devices, smart devices, and we are looking at those platform and uh, see what we can do to improve the security. So this figure shows basically how many problems are being discovered uh, in each year and uh, the, 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 the trend of those vulnerabilities. And next figure, the uh, next slides summarize the major uh, problems. So if we have security breach on those platforms because they are serving like mission critical uh, or life uh, supporting devices like medical devices. If the medical devices is using ARM plus Linux platform, they're compromised, then that's a life supporting system. So that's life threatening. Uh, problems. So for smart vehicle, it can also be life-threatening uh, problems. <coughs> so, so the major threats we're talking about here will be once the system is compromised, the sensitive data is gone, then once the kernel is compromised, all the data on the device is gone. So think about the smartphone as an example. I'm using my smartphone for like health data, sensor data, and also my bank accounts. Uh, so a lot of like sensitive data and the critical applications in my life. Uh, the, the solutions. So now we, we think about a smartphone as an example. Think about smartphone as an example. If I worry about the app I'm using, for example, uh, Chase Bank account, so Chase Bank app or UA uh, app. So I'm using UA app to purchase air tickets. So it will be connected to my credit card anyway. So if I'm using this app on the platform on the place. So oh, it's automatic. So on the platform compromised, that there is no way I can protect the sensitive data. Okay? Because think about the operating system. If the operating system is compromised, then there is no security for apps. There is no privacy for apps. Operating system is serving as the manager or serving as the god of the whole computer system. Once the kernel is compromised, no secret is hidden, right? 
So all users' privacy is ex exposed. Then all control flows can be modified. So that's a huge problem. Uh, <clears throat> so there are existing solutions. So if you're working in security area, uh, probably you have heard like overshadow, ink tech. Uh, those are the popular solutions. I mean, there are two examples of the popular solutions. There are like more than 10 solutions, okay? So these solutions are proposed, if you look at the right top, right top, the figure shows the major uh, ideas how to protect uh, the compromised uh, operating system. So isolate uh, the damage from the compromised operating system, I mean, to the applications. Because we want to protect the applications in the situation when the operating system kernel is compromised. That's the goal, okay? So basically, you can see here, uh, we have uh, here some solutions. You see the right top of the slides. So we can think about the virtualization. virtualization. So the virtualization idea runs a hypervisor, runs a hypervisor below the operating system. Okay? So that's how we use cloud services. So if you rent, if you rent, uh, Amazon EC2 services, you rent a virtual machine, but your virtual machine is running on top of a hypervisor, okay? So that's the cloud structure, or we call it the virtualization structure. So that's great. So basically, if you think about that structure, now we have layered software stacks. So even if the operating system kernel is compromised, it's still good. We still have a hypervisor below the operating system, okay? So as long as the hypervisor is not compromised, we have something okay, with higher privilege level than the operating system kernel to manage everything. Okay? We're still good. So that's the goal, or that's the main idea of protection. So as long as we have something with higher privilege level than the operating system kernel, we're good. Okay? So basically, that's the key idea of Oh, so let's go back, of recent uh, proposed uh, technology. So uh, virtualized uh, running environment, we run the guest operating system. Uh, if the guest operating system is compromised, we have the hypervisor. So the hypervisor can protect the application in the compromised operating system. That's the key idea, okay? So any questions? Okay. So. The idea is very simple, and many approaches are sharing exactly the same idea, but using different implementations or using different implementation details. Okay? So that's the uh, major work in recent years. For example, Overshadow is uh, one of the very popular uh, solutions using hypervisor to protect uh, the uh, applications against a uh, compromised kernel. So even better, even better. So if you look at here, Intel SGX, this is a very hot term in recent years. SGX provide hardware protection. So the processor has included additional hardware, okay? So building a ink, uh, it's called isolated hardware area in the memory. So even if other part of memory is compromised, the isolated part will be untouched, okay? So that's the idea of SGX. Basically, we don't use hypervisor, but we use hardware, additional hardware. Uh, so basically, it, er, the earliest paper of SGX was published as, with title Heaven. It was in OSDI uh, 2014. So uh, that's the earliest idea using SGX. SGX becomes very popular. But the requirement will be the processor has to support SGX. And another problem, we don't talk about too much about that problem today, but just a reminder, we still have the side channel problem for SGX. So basically, when you enter SGX, you leave something in the cache. When you get out, then may you try to utilize the information left in the cache. So it can create a side channel for the attacker. So it is still not the perfect solution uh, but it is much better. So basically, I'm talking about okay, hypervisor-based solution or hardware-based solution, and the third category split, split. Okay, so 
if I want to protect uh, application, then how about we build the application differently or in different ways uh, from other regular applications? Uh, so like you're building an additional shell, additional protection mechanism into the application. That's the third way. So basically, these are the three major categories to support uh, the protection okay, of application against compromised operating systems. That's the existing solutions. So <clears throat> the problem of existing solution is most of them uh, are based on Intel platform or Intel architecture. So Intel architecture is being used by Intel, AMD, and many other like server uh, manufacturers, they use this platform, okay? But for mobile devices, like I said, it's ARM. ARM doesn't have SGX. Uh, when ARM was built, it doesn't support hypervisor, okay? So now it supports, but uh, we have to port the hypervisor idea in onto the ARM platform. So we don't know whether we can do that. And it's also a very heavy solution running on the ARM. Think about the hypervisor. If you are installing a virtualization platform like VirtualBox, okay, VMware, on your laptop running a virtual machine, it will be much slower. Okay? So it will significantly affect the performance of your personal computer. So it's not a solution for high performance uh, uh, computing or basically if we bring in the hypervisor idea onto mobile devices, then it may be too slow, too slow for smartphones or for smart devices, okay? Especially think about the smart switch. How can we have a hypervisor on smart switch? That's too heavy. So not a good solution. So basically here, uh, <clears throat> the proposed solution is like, we call it the trust shadow. We build a protected application area on the ARM processor. Uh, so it's called a shadowed area, shadow area. Uh, so we trust that area. So we protect that area against the normal operating system. Uh, so this project is collaboration efforts between Microsoft Research, UTSA. I was from UTSA. Uh, I just uh, moved to Rossville uh, last fall. <laughs> so uh, this work was done when I was at UTSA and also Penn State, uh, Florida uh, Institute of Technology. We, we worked together uh, to develop this idea and implement the system on, uh, on ARM processors. So we want to support the applications without any changes, modifications, because uh, that's important. If we want to change the applications, then our protection will have very limited applications. So uh, then the vendors or the software uh, developer, they need to change their uh, application to adopt our uh, structure or technology. So that's, that's a lot of efforts. So basically we are saying, okay, our protection should not require any changes uh, to the existing application. And uh, also we want to use, we want to use existing operating system. Uh, we don't want to change anything to the operating system. Okay. So we want to use existing application, existing operating system. So basically it's easy, it's very easy to be adopted uh, on the existing uh, mobile platforms. So before we go to the full technical details or complete solutions, we, let's look at the uh, background of ARM processors. So in case you don't work on this area, so probably you are working on AI, so this picture will give you some background. Okay, so how the ARM processor looks like and uh, how much difference it is from uh, the Intel processors, okay? So here, uh, <coughs> the ARM processor, uh, so this figure is mainly for uh, ARM Cortex-A series. So our ARM has two series. So Cortex-A is for mobile devices. Cortex-M uh, has less computing function, less powerful uh, computing power than Cortex-M is really for uh, devices, um, like not that smart. Uh, so Cortex-A uh, is usually for mobile devices, still doing some computing, doing some graphical uh, things. So here, this figure shows, uh, this is uh, the structure for both Cortex-A and Cortex-M, but if you look at 
uh, <coughs> the details, uh, we mainly use this structure for Cortex A, Cortex A, because Cortex A has more powerful uh, processor than Cortex M. So basically, we if you look at the red color here, the red color, red line here, divide uh, the processor mode into two separate world. We call it world. So the red part in green color, you see that's a secure world. Okay. So in secure world, uh, the change of memory can be anywhere. Can be anywhere uh, of the processor connected memory space. But in the normal world, in the normal world, the access to the memory is limited. Is limited. So now think about a computer using ARM processor like Chromebook. Okay. So for the whole memory space, some space can only be accessed by the secure world. Okay. But the old space, old memory space, uh, 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 if 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 the secure world, secure world. Uh, Configure allows all space can be accessed by the processor from the secure world, but the normal world, normal world can have very limited access. Okay, they are not allowed. If the processor is in normal world, the processor cannot have all access permissions to all the locations of memory. So limited access. So that's the permission designed by the ARM processor. So basically, when we enter the secure world, when we enter the secure world, we can do everything we want. If we go back to the normal world, we have very limited functions. Okay, so that, that that's the short summary, short short summary of it. So, given this security design in a normal world, if you look at the devil. In red color here, this devil means okay. The operating system kernel is compromised. Okay, so in the normal world, we have uh, operating system kernel compromised by the attacker already. Okay, so basically, if the attacker is here in the normal world, like I said before, the attacker cannot access the secure world. Okay, so the damage will be restricted to the normal world only. Okay? So that's the hardware design by the ARM processor. So here on the right side, if we have a trusted component, like trusted OS here, I'm writing trusted OS here, but later on I will explain it's really not a complete OS. We, we don't run two operating systems here. So this trusted OS just uh, show it serves the operating system function, but we really don't have two operating systems here. Okay, So think about the right side. So if in the secure world, the attacker compromised any component, then the whole platform is gone. Okay, that, That's the situation we do not want it to happen. Okay? So basically, here, given this figure, I'm seeing the hardware supports a secure isolation between the secure world and normal world. If anything bad happens to the system, we want the bad thing to be isolated, to be contained to the left part, to the blue part. Okay, so that's it. That's the goal. So, given this hardware support, given this hardware support, now we can think about some possible solutions. So if, so very straightforward, very straightforward, okay? So, okay, so the secure world sounds really good, okay? So anything we put in the secure world, it will not be touched or accessed by the attacker, okay? That's really, really good. So why don't we put the operating system and the applications, everything into the secure world? Then nobody can touch it. All of them are protected. Can anyone tell me, why don't we do that? So does that sound a very straightforward solution and uh, then the problem is all solved? Why not? Yes? Because we need to install applications that would change or like, like. Oh, here, here, I can repeat. So, so basically, 
uh, he is saying uh, if we install the application to the secure world, we are going to change the application design, right? That's your point. Yeah, that, that state, that operating system state will change if we install Okay, so basically the installation of application will also change the operating system, right? Yeah, that's a very good point. So basically he's saying, okay, when we try to bring everything to the secure world, actually we already changed the application operating system there, right? Very good point. So basically, he's absolutely correct. And uh, think about if we are moving everything to the secure world, or in other words, secure room, secure room. We think this room is isolated, this is trusted room. Then we bring everyone here, then this room will be secure? Actually not. Probably we bring in some bad people here, <laughs> right? I'm not saying you're bad people, but uh, when we bring in everything here, everything to the secure world, we are bringing risks, problems, everything we are bringing to the secure world, okay? So that, that's against our initial goal. We cannot do that. So we must leave untrusted component to the normal world. We only bring in trusted component to the secure world. That's what we can do about it, okay? So another comment. For operating system, we absolutely don't want to move any operating system, the whole operating system, into the secure world. What's the reason of that? So for software engineering perspective, for security perspective, any operating system, I mean, except, except the, 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 the uh, customized operating system, or especially uh, developed operating system like SR4, uh, most operating systems, they are too large to secure. They have several millions lines of code. There is no way to make sure they are vulnerability free, they are absolutely secure, no way to do that. So, so, so we cannot move the whole operating system into the secure world because we are bringing in all the problems uh, to the secure world, okay? So that's why it's not a simple or straightforward uh, solution. So we cannot move everything there. We can only move what we want to protect there. So only trusted applications, okay? So here, this solution, this solution, basically, okay, so you bring the first point, so can't protect the legacy code, okay? So if we want to move operating system there, application there, there must be some changes, either to the operating system or to the application, right? Very good point. So that's the first thing. We cannot move everything in the secure world. And also additionally, like I said, too large to secure. And also doesn't support memory uh, encryption. So I explain this later because, uh, so, so currently you can think about once uh, uh, the, when we access, once the kernel is compromised and uh, the kernel can access anywhere it can access. Okay, so like the normal world the kernel can access all space in the normal world. So if we have trusted data in the normal world, it will be disclosed to the attacker. Okay, so if we have compromised kernel in the security, it will be disclosed to the uh, whole computer platform. So that's the problem. So let's see. Let's look at this figure first, then we go back to the summary, okay? So this figure shows, you can see here, okay? So we only move trusted application to the secure world, okay? Then you see here at the bottom of the trusted application, the previous figure shows the complete operating system, secure operating system. But here, like I said, complete operating system is too large to be brought in here, okay? We only have a runtime system. So now think about the runtime system as a very small component. It's a proxy, it's proxy. It's just a forward, so okay. So if you are making a system call, let's say every, so as a computer science major or other major, as long as you do programming a system call, you will know here. So applications will make a system call, right? Uh, open file, close file, or send message, here, system call. Then this runtime system will serve as proxy, okay? It's not a complete operating system, but it serves as proxy, you see here, forward the request to the kernel outside the secure world. So basically, 
I don't trust the kernel, but I trust the runtime system. So please forward my service request. Then the service will be done by the kernel outside the secure world, so in the normal world. Okay. So this is the key idea how we solve the problem. But now I have a question for you. So <laughs> not, not that simple. So uh, looks like problem solved. So my question will be, OK. So every application will make a lot of system calls, right? So anyway, I'm not saying we do all the system calls here, because as I said already, we don't have a complete operating system in the secure world. So now all the work, or most of work, will still be done outside the secure world. So here, Linux kernel. But I'm marking the kernel as compromised. So you may ask, what are you saying there? You're still sending the work to a compromised kernel. Then how the job can be done? What do you think? <laughs> can I think about it? So, so I'm sending a job to a person I don't trust. Okay? So it's possible, like I said, open the file. Then this compromised kernel will not open the file. Okay? But he tells me, I open the file for you, but actually not. Okay? What if it happens? That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I don't care. So the protection goal here is I don't want to guarantee a compromise the kernel still do the job. I don't care whether it does his job. I only care my application here. My application is protected. So in the case of a compromised kernel, my information is not disclosed. That's it. That's my goal. I don't guarantee the functionality of the kernel, but in the case of a compromised kernel, I want security, I want confidentiality, I want integrity. Okay? So that's my security goal. So basically, this is the protection structure. So basically, okay, I want to do some system call, I send the system call to runtime system, then this proxy will forward my request to the kernel. Okay? So regardless, the kernel is compromised or not, is doing the job or not, I don't care. Okay? You need to do the job. Do it or not, reply. That's it. Okay? So that's the protection. But in the case, now we look at the figure again. So in the case that the kernel is compromised, you see here, the kernel is compromised. It's different from existing system. It's different from any existing platform. This kernel can only access normal world. Okay? So this kernel cannot access anything inside the secure world. Then that's it. That's our goal. That's the goal of our design. Okay? So it cannot steal anything from our app. It cannot do anything to harm the integrity of our application. That's it. My social security number is protected. My bank account is protected. My transaction is protected. That's the goal. So in case of a compromised operating system, my app is protected. That's it. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So does it? So where is the runtime system actually? Is it running in like a kernel mode state, like oh, where good. it has like superior, like a lot of power to it, like operating power or what? How does oh. that work? Okay, let me repeat your question. So he asked, where is the runtime system? Uh, I mean, running here and how the, basically, you're also asking how the services are done, like in addition to the uh, kernel functions, what are the processor mode, and what are the privilege levels, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good question. So I'm show, going to show you in next. Okay. <laughs> very good, very good question. So you must be in this field, okay, <laughs> very good. So let's go back to look at the quick summary. So we have limited time. So a uh, quick summary of our design goal. So basically, we want the isolation. We want the isolation, OK? So we want a strong isolation using the hardware facility to isolate our ap applications from the compromised operating system. Secondly, we want to reduce the trusted computing base. So this is important. Like I said, there is no way to secure the whole operating system that's so large, several billions lines of code. So now we want to reduce the 
TCP will only guarantee runtime support the proxy. If we secure the proxy, the proxy has only 5,000 lines of code. Uh, so in our de development, so that's a small amount of code we can secure, okay? So it's lightweight. So I'm sure if you know IAGO attack, IAGO attack. So this is a famous attack. Uh, uh, compromised operating system kernel can use manipulated return values, return values from the system call to compromise applications. So this is very smart. So IAGO attack is uh, like a uh, serious uh, threat uh, I mean, to applications if the kernel is compromised. So our design can defend against uh, this type of attack because in our workflow, we can add additional <coughs> integrity check before we return the values to the application. So additional uh, security is added. So now back to your question, so let's go uh, to see. Okay, so this is the workflow. Hopefully you can, can answer uh, better or most of your questions. So basically you can see here, now we have more detailed view to both worlds, okay? So for every processor design on x86, I think most of us can remember the ring levels, right? Ring zero, ring one, ring two, ring three, those are four different privilege levels or we can also say those are different processor modes, okay? So if you look at it here, so we have SVC, that service uh, mode. So you make a system call, uh, ARM processor goes here. ABT, that's a board. So basically if you're accessing page, not in the memory or invalid page access, that's a board mode. So IRQ is the interrupt processing mode here. So that's interrupt. Uh, so that's the user mode. If you look at the dash line here, above dash line is user mode, uh, below dash line is privilege mode. So actually, if you look at the ARM reference menu, so it goes so fast. If you look at the ARM reference value, depending on the model of the processor, it may have more processor modes uh, here. But here, I'm just uh, using this example to show for different processor modes, <coughs> uh, for different <coughs> functions of processor, how we arrange, how we arrange the uh, privilege levels here in our design, okay? So basically here, you see normal world. Uh, if we serve, if we serve the application in the normal world uh, using the service mo mode of processor here, uh, we are going to have uh, problem because like I said, if the kernel is compromised, then everything is compromised. So instead here, uh, once we move our trusted application to the secure world, you see here, that's the monitor here we have in the uh, secure world. And then you see the service uh, will be done in the secure world. So once we have a service request or a system call, it will be done in the secure world using this path, in this path. But the actual service, like I said, it will go back, proxy will forward, okay? So you see here, the secure world also ha have all the processor mode, like the secure world will handle uh, paging separately uh, from the normal world. So paging uh, is about virtual memory management. Basically you access a memory page if it's not in the memory, we need to map, uh, we need to map or load the memory contents and uh, update the page table, update the page table. So basically here, you see here. <coughs> so in the secure world, we manage the page table, you see the abort, abort mode handled and uh, the normal world abort. So these two page table management are separate, they are separate. So in case we have uh, compromised the kernel in the normal world, the secure world paging will not be affected. So the memory management will not be compromised. Okay, so this is very important. So in addition to the processor mode isolation, uh, we also need to think about the memory, memory, how memory is protected in the case of uh, compromised kernel. So here, this figure shows better, like I said, this is a secure world, this normal world, and like the manage the memory management unit MMU 
MMU is for paging, right? So MMU, we have two sets of paging. So one set is for secure word, one set is for normal word. So you see the different color here? S is for secure, secure word uh, and uh, in shadow. So, uh, so you see here, the zone isolation, we consider like a uh, normal uh, area. TZ is for trust zone, the secure word. Secure word is called trust zone. So trust zone runtime, trust zone app. So basically you see, that's how we map, how we map the memory space in the <coughs> secure world and in the normal world, how they are overlapped, uh, how they are divided. You see, we don't overlap uh, the secure world and the normal world, uh, but we, we will need, we need to somehow overlap, so I will explain why. So the reason is, we, we don't want absolutely clean isolation. The reason is, think about system call. What, what do we need for system call? We need the parameters, we need the parameters. If you have system call, open a file. You have to tell which file you want to open, right? That's part of parameter. So basically, uh, so, let, so let's play the, the, the <coughs> uh, slides here, but, uh, oh, so I touched, I touched the keyboard. Uh, so go here. So, so basically, uh, when we uh, try to, let's, let's, let's go to here, he's here. Okay, so from here, from this figure we showed, we isolated the secure word and normal word. But like I said, <coughs> if we consider system calls, we have to transfer some contents as the parameter and we have to accept the result of system calls. The result sometimes is not only a single uh, like number, sometimes is the contents in the buffer, okay? So it's not a easy, there is no easy way to just encrypt, decrypt, or not to share uh, the parameters uh, using like registers, using a fixed like array structure or something like that. So basically, we have to overlap, overlap only a little bit, a specific area of memory between the normal world and the secure world to transfer the system call parameters and the result, okay? So that's necessary. So here, when you look at the figure, it's not absolutely uh, isolated between the secure world and normal world. We still have something, okay, so some area will be used to transfer parameter and the replies, okay? So remember that. The next step, next step, because we are having trusted applications, we are protecting the parameters, protecting the replies. Now we need to have additional protection about the application. So think about application. Because when we double click application, the operating system, the operating system is the guy who loaded the application. But I'm saying something sounds like a paradox or a contradictory. We don't trust the operating system. Now I'm asking operating system to load my trusted application. How can we do that? What if the operating system changes my application during the loading process? That's disaster, right? So we want the integrity of the trusted process. So here, you see here? So we create a profile. <coughs> for each trusted process, okay? You see here, that's the example, so this is the example. So this is the data structure. So if a programmer, you probably want to see the <laughs> right the bottom part, that's the data structure. Uh, but the general idea is here. So basically, we generate the hash value, we add a signature to the application. So when the application is loaded, we check the signature to make sure the integrity of the application is fine, it's good, okay? So no changes, okay, not compromised. So this, but of course, adding the signature, adding hash value will require additional verification and the calculation when the, uh, when the uh, program is loaded, okay? 
So that, that's the key idea of how we protect the, the application. Of course, there are other uh, issues, so memory, devices, interrupt handling, paging, uh, but we don't ever have very limited time. So uh, I can let you give you the references, you can read the further details there, but that's the key idea, okay? Any uh, questions? Yes. Like, is it on? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, you said like you uh, load the entire app into the secure world, uh, uh, which means it's a uh, 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 memory slot which is like not accessible to the uh, user space, basically, sort of, right? Right. So, uh, so like, do uh, so you load like the entire app, uh, like the app memory? into your uh, secure world memory or like only some pointers or like uh, some information of the app into the secure world uh, for example like uh, some important files or like the password file or you load like the entire memory into the secure world how oh, that's does very that good question so th there are a lot of issues involved here so first we still follow paging we don't load the whole i, I said the whole application i'm saying whenever any part of the application is needed, it will be loaded. So we still use oh, so paging, like virtual memory dynamic, memory. Dynamic, not like the entire memory. Oh yes, that's right, that's oh, right, okay. that's right, uh, correct. And also you asked a very good question because you mentioned the keyword function, function. So for security purposes, there are some critical things or critical functions that cannot rely on any untrusted sources like random number generator <laughs> random number generator so if you want this function we don't even think about a compromised kernel forget about that so some functions so when i explained the basic ideas i said all the system calls go to the outside go to the normal world okay we don't trust i don't care but actually, we care. <laughs> we have several identified secure functions. Secure, not, not, not many, so only several. We rely on them for security work, or for secure uh, computing. So like I said, uh, random number generator. So we don't rely on the outside world. We rely on the secure world. So we include that function inside the secure world. So that's a very good point. So okay. we, we do consider those functions. So they are separated from the operating system kernel, then they are in, they're, they're protected. Okay. Okay. okay, I got it. Very good, very good question. And uh, yes. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, where is the process actually verified? Is that in like the runtime or is it in the actual oh, application runtime. itself? Runtime, okay. runtime. So, uh, but, but, but the once, once, when we load the application, we verify once, but after we load it, it's already in the secure world, we don't write. Okay. So because due to performance uh, issues, so if we keep running it, so we are wasting our time, right? Yeah, any other questions? Yes. You, you made a great point that it's highly desirable not to force applications to be changed in order to be ported. Mm -hmm. uh, but w w what language should I use for application for your platform? Oh, basically whatever language you are using now to oh. develop the application, because I, like I said, this platform will support legacy applications, no modification is needed, so keep whatever you are using. So it's language agnostic, that, uh, that's so really the, great. Because this, this is only a platform that doesn't enforce, I mean, introduce additional requirement to the applications. Yeah, that's really great. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So uh, just quickly show uh, you the evaluation. So this is a uh, very popular uh, benchmark to see the performance. We, we, we did other experiments, but uh, just show you this is the major, major experiments to, to see. Uh, there are some other popular uh, protection mechanisms like Inktech, uh, they are very popular, uh, Virtual Ghost. Uh, so you see the overhead here, 2.01, then you see other numbers. Um, so our system has like 
you can see the overhead here, but the compared with the other system is, is lower, is much lower. And uh, this uh, figure shows for web servers, that's the overhead HTTP server overhead, and uh, this is the, the HTTPS <coughs> in red color. So basically the highest overhead you can see 1.10. Uh, so that's pretty much acceptable. I mean, considering all the security benefits we have, right? And uh, actually, even better, if you think this is a web server, who, who is going to run web server on ARM platform? So basically, it's, it, I mean, look to me, it's pretty uh, acceptable to me. So, uh, so basically, uh, our experiment is showing, so for those popular benchmark programs or applications, we are uh, proposing or implementing a uh, very practical uh, security mechanism on the ARM uh, processors. So, uh, okay, I think we have one hour, right? Just, I think, seven minutes left, right? Usually they end at 5.20, but yeah. you can take Oh, okay, sorry, minutes. sorry. So, okay, any other uh, questions? Okay, so just as a quick, uh, let me just uh, give you some information so what we are continuing on this project. So like I said before, it's never be a perfect solution. So because Trust Zone is still an isolation between two worlds. So when you enter Trust Zone, exit Trust Zone, you are going to left some inf leave some information uh, in the cache somewhere else in the memory. Those information left uh, when you enter or exit, the, I mean, trans transiting between the two worlds uh, will create set channels. So attackers may utilize those information left by the application then to get some like uh, information from the application. So it's never <laughs> absolutely secure. Uh, so our solution is only about the strong isolation, it's memory isolation, but uh, is not a solution for set channels. So we are working on set channels basically we look at what information are left uh, after we enter trust zone, then how they can be utilized. So that's problem. Uh, probably you are also interested in, so that's one possible <laughs> research problems. Okay. So any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Okay, thanks. <laughs>